years. And photojournalist Jorsen Arsenault caught up with the group and has more on what they call the bio blitz. We're uh, out here collecting insects as part of the Busey Woods Bio Blitz. So we're trying to collect as many insects, many, as many different kinds of insects as we can. So it sort of introduced the, the general public to uh, biodiversity, what it means, you know, and how many species you can find just in your own backyard. It's kind of like a giant scavenger hunt for scientists. How many species can they find in a 24-hour period of time? A mating pair of Cecropia moths, it's the largest moth found in North America and the largest moth in Illinois. Then we found these nice things called uh, rushlas, and they form associations with the, uh, with plants. The insects come out through the little hole into this clear plastic soda bottle and then they fall down into this uh, bag of alcohol and then basically we just collect them and we take them back to the lab, look at them under the microscope and try to figure out how many species we've got. See that guy right? See those two? I will. That was the first of those I've seen. Our camps, our, our Nature Day camps, have been studying biodiversity for the last two weeks and several of those camps s took hikes. Like about nature, we've studied the bugs and stuff. For us, it's it's kind of business as usual, but for everybody else watching and so forth, it's it's a, it's a kind of a different world, a new world. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan, and the scientists were especially interested in finding bullfrogs in the Busey Woods. And WCI3's photojournalist Jordan Arsenault gives you one last look at 50 style drive-in in action. Well, this place was built in 1952, so it has quite a history, and uh, it's been here as a root beer hot dog drive-in, one of the last in the area. I heard it's closing down. Yeah, we, we, we had to come back before it did. They're closing tomorrow. It's the last day. My reasons for closing are that I just got tired of uh, making hot dogs and hamburgers. I'm 65, so it's time to retire. We had to come and get a Coney dog and a root beer. Coney dogs, the root beer float. I mean, that's just classic. You that's the first thing you think You of. really can't beat the float. Okay. Barbecue, they come for miles around to eat the barbecue. I've always had barbecues. You find something good, you got to stick with it. It's the last drive-in that you can eat at. Just being able to sit in your car and eat, and I think it's... It's pretty, pretty convenient. Nice. Yeah, convenient. So the drive-in window is taking the place of the drive-in restaurant. Tenderloin or in? Order. This is one of Danville's best places to eat, in my opinion, yeah. but... So yeah, it'll be sad to see it go. Well, it's just nostalgic, and I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry to see it leave. Well, I'm uh, sorry to have to close and leave you in the lurch. You're all welcome to buy the place and continue the tradition, if you wish. We need somebody younger that has uh, some new ideas. Thank you. Have a good day. There you go. Give him a little nudge. Photojournalist Jordan Arsenault shows us their story of generosity and courage. We are a family from North Mississippi. We come from a town called Seminary. We were here because our house sustained damage. We haven't had any power or electricity. But when we got here, we saw, we found out there was a need for food. And we decided, well, we'll do our best with the help of the citizens of Champaign and areas around here and our family and friends to bring food down to them. They need non-perishable items, canned food, plates, napkins, diapers, wet wipes, um, Things in bulk. If you can just imagine, they're completely out of everything, so um, they need all all types of items. You can get a lot of things for at low cost here at Sam's. Thank you. We ask people, please come out. You know, if it's one can, if it's a cartload of cans, if it's rice, if it's just a dollar, if it's a thousand dollars, please. We really could use your support. God bless you, doll. Thank you. <laughs> Nine kids would be a lot of helping hands. Photojournalist Jordan Arsenault used his camera to show us how. My name is Peter Vrignos, and uh, we're keeping our 108-year-old tradition of homemade candy cane making going here in, in the Champaign area. <laughs> Mardi Gras to me. Today we're making something special. Yeah. We're making Mardi Gras for New Orleans colors. It'll be a green, yellow, and purple. And anyone who buys one of those canes, 100% of the money will go to Katrina Relief. 
That's the beginning process right there. We're gonna turn that into candy canes. We make it exactly like our grandfather, same recipe book, it tells us what ingredients to put in, and then the recipe said, and then go to work. Christmas has a lot to do with traditions. We're thinking maybe the tradition was gonna end this year. So uh, we're very, very happy and very pleased to be here and to continue doing it. Who knew it was so much work? Photojournalist Jordan R. Snow caught up with him at a practice session and shows us why good technique is important in any sport. It's kind of a once in a lifetime chance. There's gonna be the 40 best carvers in the world. It's an honor and uh, you know, I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna do the best that I can and I'm gonna carve a, hopefully the piece of a lifetime and hopefully the judges will see that as well. Today, Eric is carving his piece for the Olympic ice carving team and it's going to be an abstract form because that's the category that he'll be carving in in Italy. People are always amazed uh, with the ice that you can actually accomplish the things that we do. Several different electric chainsaws, die grinders, four inch chisel, a two inch chisel, a V gouge. Yeah, I've probably got about eight or to ten thousand dollars worth of tools sitting on the table at any given time. He totally gets in the zone whenever he's carving. He works at a very fast pace. He's a very much a busy body and I think this is a good field for him. I think it's starting to come alive for him. I think he's starting to realize it's a reality now that the countdown is on and the excitement is building. Let's make a great pumpkin on Halloween. And WCI3 photojournalist Jordan Arsenault went along to capture Rob's ride. And you're going to have a harness on, have some straps right down through here like this. I'm official. Hello, everybody. We're out here at the World Free Fall Convention. My name's Fast Daddy. we got Rob right here, and we're going skydiving. We're going to get in the airplane. We're going to go up to 14,000 feet. We're going to jump out of the airplane. We're going to plummet towards the ground at 120 miles an hour. We'll fall for about 60 seconds. The most amazing thing is you don't feel like you're falling. You feel like wow. you're out there flying or floating. It's, it's exactly pretty nice. Skydiving doesn't take muscles. doesn't mm -hmm. take any strength to skydive. It's all about balance and symmetry, okay. keeping your body in a symmetrical position. We'll get down to about 5,000 feet. We'll open up the parachute. And then together, we fly the parachute around, maneuver it, and bring it down and land it. All right. Ready? Ready? Now! Hey, we made it! Now Russ doesn't have to ask the manager question on Monday where in the heck I'm at, so we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, how about a good thumbs up here for the camera? Yeah, about that, but do! That was great. Y'all have to do this. I'm telling you, it's amazing. <laughs> He's inspired me. <laughs> well, we have a school day, so no better way to bend it than go sledding and have fun. <laughs> a lot of compact when you hit the ground. Oh. You go up and then you just come down and feels like you get the wind knocked out of you. It's fun if you get fast. It, it's almost too much. Hey, you're just hanging out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chilling in the snow. Chilling in the snow. It's wonderful. We woke up and got the uh, email from the chancellor that school was off. We figured if it was the first time in 30 years that this has happened, uh, we're going to make the most of it. What are you guys using as sleds? Uh, yeah. We stole cafeteria trays. Your standard cam tray, UIUC dining hall tray. They're not working so well, so we got to figure out how to use them it's too better. deep. Cafeteria works best for the cafeteria trays. <laughs> you generally like snow days? You don't get very many. This is the first one we've ever had. Yeah, so how does it feel? Oh, God! 
Interesting.